down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, hot chicks, ugly chicks, all chicks, cool dudes, ugly dudes. They're all the same. Everybody's the same because you try to make money. Welcome to the Savvy Radio Show. Bang, bang. Today, I'm going to teach you, not me, somebody else, my special guest, how to make money out of no money, out of thin air. What is my favorite thing in the world, a.k.a. hustle? And, uh, you know, I've been trying to get this cat on the radio show for so long. He's been blowing me off. I, I can't believe I, what I'm going to tell you all right now. You can't blow me off. I'm, I'm intricate in this this young investor's world. He's intricate in my world. And uh, we've had a lot of meetings together, at least on a weekly basis for for at least a couple of years. Uh, We've had a lot of festivities together, children together, birthday together, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm I'm really excited that I finally had to twist this dude's arm uh, to get him to have a radio show. And uh, just to be straight up honest, I asked him, you know, man, why, you know, why, you know, why you won't help somebody? And he really he wants to help people. But he said, when I tell someone to do something, they don't do it. And I'm like, man, you speak in my love language, homie, because that's exactly how I feel. Everybody wants to be an Airbnb. Everybody wants to be a real estate investor. But then when you spend the time and help them, they don't do it. And I think we're going to stop that right now. But that's the reality of life. And if you take some of these things today, uh, really let people know, let myself know so I can let Mr. Jasper Harrison know. Um that you've contributed to their life. I, I mean, I, you're, you're listening to a man right now that has died and rose again and has made mistakes and has made home runs. And it's not easy, but just give you a quick perspective. The theme today is arbitrage. The theme today is short-term, long-term rental, mainly long-term, and also the life of a real estate hustler, entrepreneur, investor, wonderful father, and also civil engineer. And he's been doing this game since 2016. And he has seven units on his own, seven rentals and seven ultra, I mean, seven arbitrage units, which is pretty commendable. Cause I remember when you dove into this game. So have I really known you that long for five years? Yep. Really? That's when I met you, man, it's been a long time. <laughs> Anyway, this guy, this cat that I'm talking to today, we're going to get all the juice out is he, he was so, he read rich dad, poor dad. And he's like, Hey man, can I help you? Can, can I serve you in some form or fashion? And I'm like, what, what do you mean? And he, Jasper Harrison is the first time I said, yes, I need help building my son's drums. So that's gotta be five years ago. And, uh, Jasper came over to the crib and built my son. Oh no, I brought him to the office. He built my son's drums. And then you helped, you came to the crib and helped me build when I moved into my house, you helped me build the cabinets because for some weird reason, I like people that are detailed and Jasper Harrison is detailed. So welcome to the savvy radio show. Thank you, sir. So I'm glad uh, to be here. are you shy? No, not at all. You scared? No. Okay. So what took you so long to get on a radio show? Um, probably my own fears. Yeah, exactly. We won't squash those today. You a baller. Let's just speak life into you. You successful, man. I don't know if I met you when you had nothing, but, uh, you're on your way to massive success. Uh, I knew you were special. Uh, when you asked me for a $3,000 loan and I said, you got it. And, uh, we'll get into that, uh, from, from later on, but anyway, so, Tell us, how did you get into real estate in the beginning? Because I think that's the most fascinating thing on the planet. When we're knit together in real estate, what made you get into real estate? How did, how did that all go about? Well, uh, for me, um, the, pl- the seed was planted probably when I was, it was about 15 years ago. Um, but, you know, we have this old programming of, you know, you need to have a job, a house, a car kids, all that stuff. So I lean more towards that. And um, that's, uh, you know, what really got me started in it 
was um, my kids were born. Um, I had received a new position at my job and we, <clears throat> you know, they give you a raise for, <laughs> for these positions, but the responsibility way, way outweighs the pay. Right. right. So um, it's one of those deals that I, I, I know that I needed to do more for my family. And so I got into real estate um, as an avenue to provide more, but also to um, create a legacy for for my family. So was there a defining moment? Was there a book? I mean, you're pretty you're, you're oh. a civil engineer, right? I mean, it's that's a, that's not an easy task to do. You, you know, CAD. You know how to build bridges. You know how to topography uh, on stuff. Like when I called you the other day about building these tiny houses, you blew me up. You knew what was up. Um, what yeah, was it? So, a book? Was it a person? Yeah, I, I had read a, a lot, um, and I, I'll be out honest. Um, you know, I read a lot, and then at the same time, I was. Um, and, you know, in parallel, I was paralyzed, right? Because I had all this information and it really just took uh, getting out of my comfort zone and uh, taking, taking a jump. Um, I did have some, some, some stresses from work that kind of propelled me knowing that, okay, well, this I know gonna I, I, you, it's going to stress me out completely. Mm -hmm. yes. So you were looking so to think of a backup plan of an essence. Absolutely. We've got to have okay. more than uh, one stream of income. In so world, how, how sure. far in advance do you think ahead? Did you think that you would have, like when I met you, you had one Airbnb. Is this hmm. where you want to be with seven of them or are you three years down the line? So I actually, I have eight Airbnbs. One of my holds is also when, when oh, okay. seven no, eight arbitrages. Airbnbs. I have but seven it's not the straight hustle of, of, and we'll get into the hustle of, right arbitraging but i mean did you is this are you in the time frame that you want to be in and uh, are you fast slow are you excited i mean do you want to go harder where, are you at the right point where you want to be i'm absolutely not where i want to be um mm -hmm. I, I want to double this year um my whole my my arbitrages um and and you know due to circumstances and, and the way that our market is, it's, it's, it's increasingly harder to, to, to do it and be profitable, but um, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm not where I want to be. It's, it's a good start. I'm I, you know, I have eight units that I have, but um, I, I, my goal is probably 30. Okay. And 30 of those is right. where I'm at. <clears throat> All right. This good. We'll get into the, to the nitty gritty of them. So what made you, we met at a real estate, OKC Ria, which was at a hotel. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when we first met and we became friends and we've been friends, obviously, for this long. What made you go to that meeting? So how'd you get introduced to that? Um, surprisingly, it was my wife. OK, um, I read all these books. I was bigger pockets podcast. I was doing all this craziness. And then she was just like, well, you need to do something local. So she did a Google search and there was only two at the time. Now there's a lot more media mm -hmm. meetups and types of things, but okay. See Rhea, I think, I think it was a third meeting that I met you and it was, you know, they do this little um, like network meet and greet where they group. Oh you yeah. Off. They, the speed dating and, type of situation. Right. Right. And that's what we did. And we were talking about sheriff sales and I had been to probably two or three of those at the time. And we got to talking about this and you turned to me and she was like, why haven't you bought a property yet? I said, and that I was you. like, yes, he did. <laughs> so I, made I totally you feel small, like, you know, my bad, like, homie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, it's good. Like you, you totally uh, have, have called me to action on many of occasions. Oh yeah. We're going to break them all off today. Yeah. So no, it, was, it was good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, sure. so you, so your wife, okay. Is Luz, right? What's, what's her name? Correct. Her name right. is you Luz. got, you got two beautiful twins. And then you got so, another child and you got another child. Right. I mean, you right. how many kids you rocking? Four. Three. So so my wife was married with uh, two kids prior to um, divorcing and getting with me. So we, I, she, you know, two kids with us. Okay. And then when we got married. Uh, we had twins. So I have uh, four kids uh, that so are mine. That you maintain or not maintain. Correct. She maintains. You try to buy them stuff. I, I hear you. It's a cost effective. <laughs> yes. All right. And you love being a daddy. I, I, I see it. Um, you're a great dad for sure. Um, so 
you got into real estate. So what t- were you nervous on your first deal? So you, you went to, you read some books, your wife pushed you out the door, said, get your stuff right. You come in here, you get called out some, some crazy dude named Savvy says, why didn't you buy no house? You were pissed off probably. And you were an engineer. And so engineers are analysis paralysis, right? I mean, no, no joke. You feel like you're going to fail. You're going to feel like you're going to win. You feel like you're not going to make enough money. Right. I mean, I know I can't imagine what goes on in your head all day. Yeah. Because you probably get beat up. Uh, you got a boss over you. You're trying to lay out stuff. I mean, it's probably where all this anxiety comes in in society. Um, how did you, what made you find your first deal? Let's go through that real fast. And this is, this is not even Airbnb wasn't even on your radar then, right? This was straight up. Just, I need to buy a rental property to make money. Correct. Tell me about that. How'd that roll out? Um, my first one, uh, was, uh, we were with a group of people. Um, and it was kind of like a person that was doing a lot of the work in the beginning, as far as had the knowledge and we were kind of learning underneath them. Uh, but, um, it was, it was a, a three, one sitting on a half acre mm-hmm. close to your, like on 71st street, which is like right down the street from you and uh, your, from your office. Oh yeah. And, I uh, went and looked at that house with you, right? Yeah. It's actually, the one your realtor we, we, called and we got to run over there and I was all out with juice with you. Cause it's like, this ain't no deal. No, th- this is one where you did a bus tour and it was the one next door okay, to the cool. one that we visited. And so, um, yeah, we went through the whole, you know, rehab situation and, and I remember got a renter. You were frustrated mm-hmm. with a contractor. This is your first taste that someone said they lied to you. They said right. they're going to be on the job and you at your job and you drive over there and they're not on their not job, there. but they want to get paid. <laughs> 100%. I remember yeah. these conversations. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Dang, so. I remember, man. It's it's so crazy because when I look at you now, you just some baller in my mind. Yeah, man, I got like, you know arbitrage out and I'm, I'm gonna be on tv one day you know nah I, i'm just saying but that's so you you went through that process kind of on your own you pulled the trigger on your own and then you mm-hmm. figured it out on your own what kept you rolling like what kept you motivated when you got there was a lot of there was a lot of punches that you dealt with at that time yeah you know? I, I honestly i think it was the networking i thought i think it was seeing other people be successful knowing that they I had the same skills they had Mm -hmm. and I just needed to let go of some of my own uh, blocks that I had in front of me. And, you know, that the worst that could happen was I'd have to pay for something twice, essentially, Mm -hmm. you know, or you lose money or you lose money, which is to me is the same thing. Right. Right. (laughs) So, um, but you know, it's just, you stay in, in, in the lane and, and, you know, once you get started, you just, there's no options of quitting. You just, you deal with it as it comes and, and you move forward. Right. Man, that, you make it sound so easy, but you did it. Right. I mean, you have no regrets, right? I mean, you went, nah. I mean, six years ahead, right. You said 2016, it's only been five years really. So then you just started rolling. You started just picking them up as you go. Right. And, and the, mm-hmm. let's talk about your work ethic. You have a full-time job that you probably pay 10 hours of your life into it. I mean, you eight to 10 hours. Cause I know being a civil engineer, it's never, there's nothing. It's you got timelines and you got a bunch of details. So it, you got to triple check everything. So you're yeah. working a full-time job dealing with contractors. Cause you can't do it yourself. You can't leverage everything. How many more? So how fast was it moving there? Was it like you were trying to, most of your, look, let's go through how many hours were you spending working on your real estate and your other job at the same time? How, give us some perspective there. So most of the time, if I wasn't in the very beginning, if I wasn't working, uh, I was in, I was in real estate. So sometimes I would, you know, I work an eight to five schedule and, um, you know, once I left, left work, I would go and I do the work at my rental four to, to five get hours after that. Even I, I would work to two or three o'clock in the morning. It's just so, what it, I didn't put a time limit on it. I just, wanted, just wanted to get, get done. stuff done. Right. I had a list of things that I had to execute and I wouldn't stop till they got done. Period. So like, how did you, I mean, did you drink a lot of Red Bulls? I mean, like how in the world did you keep fight? I mean, did you've been doing this type of work ethic? for at least two, three years since I've known you, because we could never get together because you had a full-time job and then you were always working somewhere. 
How, how long was this grind going on for? I would say for uh, probably a good three years. I did um, in 2020, I, I took a step back from it all. Um, prices are too high. Um, and I realized that, you know, my family needed me at home. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you're gone all the time and you come, you know, you leave and your kids are in bed and you come home and your kids are in bed. Um, and then, you know, it, before you know it, they go from being a toddler to being a pre-K to being in first grade. You, you, you want to, you've got to, you're doing it for your kids. So you have to connect with them. So they, you know, it, it's, it's just a, uh, as a man, we have to, you know, run the house, be in touch with our kids, know, let them know who we are. Uh, be a husband to our, our, our wives. And it, we took a, I took a major step back. Like I, I couldn't buy anything at the time. And, um, but my, my, my Airbnbs are my short-term rentals, um, which I like to refer them as a uh, corporate rentals, okay. corporate housing. Well, um, let's talk about the whole kid thing for one more second. So I talked to an investor today and he, he was almost broke down. He said that I was working so hard in my day job. This just recently, I don't want to say this cat's name. And then he would do contracting or real estate. And then he would fall asleep and his daughter would wake him up. And he just felt terrible. Like he had to really put it in perspective. I think that there's a defining moment in your life and you got to make a decision. Where is this going and why? Right. Right. So another defining moment, I think, is what made you go into corporate housing? And I'm just going to throw this out there and you could elaborate. Was it on a cash flow basis? Was it on an emerging market? Like, hey, was it because you saw Al Williamson? Or was it because it, you were cash poor? But what made you say, hey, I'm going to go right into arbitrage? And what arbitrage is, or you can explain it, but what mm -hmm. made you get into that field and not just focus on rentals? Is it because the rentals were down? Like what you're thinking there, was it just because of cash flow? Because I think this way now, I think differently. I struggle with this and I can tell you how I feel, but I'm just fascinated what made that defining moment. Like I'm going to go all in because when you went all into this corporate housing, you, I mean, the next day you had a website. So tell me, tell me about, tell me about that deal. Yeah. Um, so um you know, when you buy a house and, and in Oklahoma, we buy houses uh, that are distressed. So mm -hmm. you got the cash suck of purchasing this house. Then you have the cash suck of reha rehabbing the house. And then you you are essentially locked in because of the rent market of how much you can make on it. So, you know, ideally, I want this to support my lifestyle. And the, it came down to, um, you know, the return of investment. It also came down to the cash flow. Um, and, you know, when it came to it, like, you know, on average, a, a, a regular rental is going to net you anywhere from 200 to 250. That's on, it, on a, a great, it, that's a great rental, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that's a home run <laughs> in some world. That's a home run. But with these arbitrages, um, you know, my minimum is 500 a unit. So if you take, okay, well, I needed 50,000 50, or 50 uh, properties to get to my number with arbitrage, I only need half that amount. Come on. And the, the, the amount of money that I have into the, to it is basically furniture, first month's rent, last month's rent uh, or deposit, and then uh, utilities. So the so amount of money- it's a risk factor too. It's a risk factor. And you don't have to have a bunch of capital. Correct. So let's break it down for people. All right, ladies and gentlemen, arbitrage is this. You basically rent a unit from someone else, a house, an apartment, and you work with this landlord. We're going to break this down in a minute. Then now you have this under your control. Now, this only costs you a deposit. It didn't, you had no big upfront cost. You didn't have to get 80, 20%. You didn't have to get uh, approved per se by a bank. And then you didn't have to have a lot of money in the bank for this. Then you furnish this unit and then you make X amount of money on, you know, to pay the rent and the expenses and you keep the pocket and you don't really maintain it because it's not your asset. 
I think it's the most beautiful thing on the planet, to be honest with you. But it's not easy. Right. right. There's a lot of details that go into it. And you got to you got to speak a, speak a a specific language. Right. I mean, and so let, let's give you some more feedback here. So this is how it all worked out. I was and, you know, on my side, I, I saw the trend of Airbnb and I have an apartment downtown Oklahoma City. And then I had a partner at this time that we owned a condo on the north side of Oklahoma City. And so and my partner at that time, she was in love with this idea. She's a de decorator and I'm not. And so we kind of banded together. And then I met Al Williamson, who was speaking at the Mr. Landlord Conference. We became fast friends, which is even more funnier that he is a civil engineer as well. And uh, I learned from him. I bought his course and I started doing Airbnb on my own. And it just sounds great. One hundred fifty dollars a night. My you know, I really only want eight hundred dollars a month for my rent. I only need to rent this thing out six times and I make my money. It sounds easy, but it's not because the customer wants a specific service. Yeah, yeah you can get one hundred fifty dollars a night, two hundred dollars a night or sixty dollars a night. But there's work that needs to be involved. There's nothing easy. Uh -huh. And so I came across I. Uh, Jesper came in my world at this time. He was so excited. He met Al. We had Al come speak one time at Investor Weekend. Al and Jasper became friends. And then I realized I got a phone call one day or a message on Airbnb. And actually, I've had another Airbnb in Florida, which it didn't go well. Someone broke something and I tried to get paid and Airbnb dissed me and didn't even respond to my request of, hey, this dude broke my table. They're like, you work it out with this guy. Well, that guy ghosted me. And so it was like, I could never get paid. And I was really had a bad taste in my mouth of the Airbnb. And then in Oklahoma city, this, this couple, their child threw up everywhere <laughs> and they just assumed it was my responsibility to take care of that for them. And so I just really realized this is not what it was. And then Jasper was in my life at that time, which he still is. And he's like, I'll take it over for you. And, um, that's how, and that during that time, you started just ramping your deal up. Yo, I'm going to get into corporate housing. I'm like, yo, all right, good luck with that. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then we worked out at some, not even a partnership, but I, I just started running units. I, I, in my mind, as a landlord, I have a trustworthy person that has integrity that, and I want him to make money. So he rents it from me. And then he turns around and handles the corporate accounts or Airbnb. I don't, however it works. I think it's a win-win, but I know that I I'm on the Facebook group of, of this long-term housing and it's not as easy as it sounds. Right. I mean, what are the pitfalls have you seen doing this? And do you enjoy doing this now? I mean, I mean, in my mind, if you're making $500 a unit, you've got nothing in it, but several thousand dollars in furniture. I mean, it just sounds like a, the Holy grail, but there's a lot of work in this. There's a tremendous amount of work on it. And um, it really depends on, you know, um, and shout outs to Al Williamson. He's, yeah, he's, he's on next. Incredible. He's yes, coming on next. He's, I, I mean, I wanted to do this interview guy. with you and then give him mad love because yes. I, I mean, so many people are becoming wealthy because of him. And yes. he's, you know, he's OG. I, I love that guy. But anyway, let's, let's continue yeah. on. So, so um, I had a hypothesis that you know, there was going to be a need for, for, you know, housing where mm. in close to the, the area that your unit was at and you were doing short term, meaning Airbnbs of less than, you know, five, Two five days, days. <laughs> yeah, five, less than five days. And uh, there's a lot of pitfalls with that. Um, my strategy is for longer term. So most of my people are staying for um, 30 plus days what's your um, longest and the longest i've had well actually i had somebody stay a uh, february of 2020 and they're moving out in on the 20th of this 27th of this month so they stayed with me Nine over months. a year um, over, over a year. year well like well at your over. high at your high rental rate <laughs> <laughs> yeah for that one i uh like 1900 dollars a month for that's that a one. lower man i'm glad um, was it in my so, unit no Oh, <laughs> but during COVID, I had a guy stay in uh, one of your units for six months. Okay, so yeah. that worked out. Um, 
but you know, with traditional Airbnbs, um, if you have those late, the shorter stays, people don't necessarily respect it. Your, your clientele, they're looking for the cheapest. And obviously Airbnb creates a, 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 an environment where uh, people, what we call race to zero. So people will try and fight over prices. Mm. Um, and well said. When, when I do it, uh, I, I'm looking to make consistent, um, consistent cash flow. When you have somebody that stays in it for a few days here and a few days there, and it's in the hot season or the, uh, you know, the, the hot season or the off season, um, your money can go all over the place. So I just, um, I essentially I'm doing a, a, a rental, right? I'm, I'm doing a, a, a long-term rental, mm-hmm. but it's still considered short term because it's not, it's less than 12 months. Um, right. The, well, the risk factor is if, if this thing crash and burn, I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? You lose your deposit, let's say. Right. You break a lease. There's a fee. Right. So, okay, let's talk about, you know, how, how do you, how does someone get going in this arena? I mean, they, first of all, you got to convince a landlord mm-hmm. that, look, I'm going to have some random people in your crib, not me. Right. Was that the hardest hurdle that you had to overcome? So it was easy to convince me. Show me the money. Yeah, <laughs> what is it, it, it was easy to convince you because you we had a history. Except um, for negotiating I, was terrible with you. You kind of hard to negotiate with. I try to raise a yeah. rent. You try to beat me up. Listen, and we're gonna talk about that after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nineteen hundred. Okay, but uh, so go back to your question. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a hard convincing the landlord. Like, no, did you? Get, I, I mean. It's, did it's, you tell them up front? Look, did you tell me corporate housing? I mean, I, I know these yes. answers kind of maybe. I don't know. Right. So you may be asking for this for the sauce, but essentially I, I, I present myself, um, you know, hey, professionally, I'm, uh, professionally, of course, um, I'm, I'm looking to uh, expand my 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 business. And, um, you know, I asked I, I basically pre qualify them over the phone. If they don't say yes, or if they say no, I'm on to the next. So it's it's just about as hard as much ener- as much energy you want to put into it. Okay, pump it breaks. This is I think you just said something that's very powerful that they need to hear. I qualified them, and I think that a young people that are getting into real estate, I can't get money. I can't do this. I think that if I could write a book on, I qualify the bank. I make it seem like they need me. And I need you. You need your rent, Mr. Landlord. I can provide that for you. I have the stature. I'm looking and I like your approach. It's, it's kind of like a confidence level. I have a lot of units. Can you fulfill me and what I'm trying to provide for the city of Oklahoma City with these long term tenants that are nurses, doctors, traveling professionals, whatever the case may be, correct? Correct. So then you have to practice that for a while and get this confidence of we can work together. Like, you know, I don't blow off a bank, but I'm like my first, I mean, when I'm coaching somebody, I'm like, you need to call a bank up and just say, what, what rates, what, what, what products are you offering? Right. And as a mm-hmm. landlord, you're asking them the same scenario, right? Like, what do you offer me as a tenant? Right. And can you kind of qualify them? Is that how that rolls out like that? Kind of like a kind of a swagger type of situation. Yeah. Um, I, so I knew there was a few things that, that the clientele needed. They needed a um, free washer and dryer. They needed, uh, um, you know, a quiet um, place. Right. To, to um, study homework. To, to study work, homework, whatever. whatever. They need fast Wi-Fi. So all these things are pretty doable, but not everyone had, it. you know, um, HVAC. They might have window units. Uh, not everyone has a washer and dryer. They're, mm. they're, so you have to uh, narrow this down. So you're you looking for a down. specific. I'm very, I'm very detail now, oriented in what I'm looking for. So someone asked me the other day about they want to buy a convert a house. Is a friend, you know, in Midwest City. I'm like, hey man, I learned this the hard way. These these facilities or you're offering, they can't be in the middle of like a typical residential area. They need to be closer to things, right? They can't. Yeah. Not not every unit can be capable of what you're trying to do. So 
A hundred percent. It doesn't work for every, and our market in general is not one of, well, there's a beach close by or, or big city, big city. It's just not like we have, um, you know, 30 miles from one <laughs> side to the next. Right. Like, but, I was thinking Memorial, like Memorial in May when Airbnb came out, there was an investor friend of mine that would Airbnb and he would go off to Dubai for a while and he would Airbnb his unit. And he knew well intended that he was not supposed to Airbnb. It, it was in his lease. But he was mm-hmm. a young guy. He didn't care. Right. But I mean, but I would make sense on that corridor, Chisholm Creek and all those restaurants and there's a mall. Are those big factors in deciding? Yes, and it, it really just depends. So if you were doing traditional Airbnb and you wanted to do it near attractions, then that's great. But you're okay. going to you're not going to I'm not. That's not my target. Clientele? Okay. My clientele. It, it, I'm, I'm very much, um, I did a lot of research in, in the areas that um, would perform. And then I, you know, got a unit there, see if I can keep it full. And then okay, cool. so there's a lot repeat. of research mm-hmm. in the background that you're doing. So you're just not putting your finger on a map and say, Hey, I'm going to have an Airbnb. Cause no. I think, is it, so for you, your, your energy is finding the best location and making sure that it would pay out versus mine would be, can I convince this landlord to work with me? Right now, of course you figured that out as you went along the process. Cause I remember when we had these conversations, you, man, I got to figure out how to convince a landlord. And you know, that came up when I, I wrote some series of questions for you. And one of those was, have you ever been beside don't, of course me and you are, we do this together, but I mean, have you ever been creative with a landlord and, and offered a percentage of the deal? No, okay. <laughs> I haven't. So if they say no, you're out. You just have standards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to like if I don't want anybody to be. Yeah. I don't want to be anybody, anybody to be in my space. Either you're going to rent to me in my company or you're not. And I'll just move on. And so you put this lease into your company name, right? You don't put it in Correct. your name personally. Okay, That's cool. Correct. And they let that happen. That's, you know, if I was coaching you, absolutely. LLC, yeah. I'm assuming. Yes, LLC. Okay, we don't want to sue me because I didn't change the sheets right. And there's some extras in the in the sheets that we didn't know about. You know, I don't want to know about it, you know. Uh, so here's another question I have for you. Startup cost. Um, mm. Now, back in the day when you started, which is the greatest story on the planet, and hopefully that you write a book, and I'm not taking credit for this at all. You did all this yourself. So... Mm-hmm. We struck up a deal. Hey, I'll even rent you my unit. And then I'll sell you the material inside the unit, all the fixings. Right. And then you come back like a month later, straight gangster on another unit, not even in my building. You rented it and I loaned you some money and you paid it off. So to me, it's like a no money down deal. Like right. you can get into this arbitrage deal, find a lease for seven for twelve hundred dollars a month or a thousand dollars, eight hundred dollars a month. Go to the thrift store. This is this is Al Williamson. Go to the thrift store, furnish this mess out, and then you're in business. W- what is a typical cost to do this? Like now, I know you have this as a business. Do yeah. you do you like okay? I need five G's now, or you know, and I know you guys are different. I, I see you chatter all not you, but I, I used to see you chatter all the time in the groups. But I see, yeah, we should buy the TCL TV. And you know, Al yeah. Williamson was all amped on the TCL, and then his ghetto pictures yesterday. I can't wait to call him out. This little, <laughs> did you see these pictures of his washer and dryer side by side? Can you guys help me with it? I'm like, what? That's ghetto. That's what you mean. Help you. Hey, that's, that's California for you. Yeah, hey. I know. I'm like, who, who operates like this? And, you know, he's straight hustler too, man. Renting out bikes, <laughs> like, oh, right. written out all kinds of stuff. So what, what's the total startup cost? Some young cat. And this is, and the reason why this is even happening today is I have a young friend that wants to do this. And he's like, he's not an entrepreneur per se. And he doesn't want to really get into real estate as a full-time landlord. He just needs cash flow, And he feels that this is his business model. And I would agree with him, right? You have a low startup cost, not a lot of risk, but it, it, I, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's not a, easy. It's a, it's a ton of work. Like it, it, the, the idea is relatively simple, but it's not easy. No, um, I know that he's going to die on a cross just like you, just like everybody else. But right. would, would you say if I wrote this dude a check for five G's and like don't and do a savvy landlord um, 
challenge. I'll write you five G's. You go find your first arbor- arbitrage and we split it 50 50. Uh, okay. So the question is, are we talking <laughs> about apartments? Are we talking about duplexes? Are we talking about a full house? Are we like, you have well, a lot of well, stuff. I mean, to, he needs to, to be coached by in. somebody. I, I right. don't know. I'm just saying like, is that a good number? Cause your last time I saw you was five years ago when it was 3000. Right. So, so, I mean, is it all a key of furniture? I mean, is it all used? Does that stuff work now? I mean, what should I tell this young dude? So I, I mix it. Um, we, we, my wife is, um, uh, my decorator and she's very wet, great at it thrifty. um she's very thrifty more yeah, than me go. honestly i'm like hey just let's but just you, <laughs> let's just, just replace it on the plan <laughs> yeah she's she's worse than i am you don't even pay uh, me <laughs> <laughs> but uh the uh you know facebook marketplace um okay that's you know that's that's where a lot of our uh some of our front uh, decor comes from decor is very expensive. If you go to like at home or Walmart, you may spend, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars in, in wall decor. Really I thought easy. you can go to Dollar Tree. Well, Dollar <laughs> Tree isn't isn't have. I mean, if you see my units there, I mean, hey, we're Dollar talking a Tree- couple I mean, hundred you like bucks. The secret Ninja, man. Nobody sees your crap, man. You don't even yeah. talk about it. You all I take it. I know I you know. live in it's, large. It's, it's kind of like I, I, I don't know. I, I guess. Um, you ain't humble. That's kind of. I'm humble. humble. <laughs> I'm humble, and I don't. I don't. I don't let like people knowing what I'm doing. I just. I like hear that. you, I, and I agree. That's my. That's of course. I'm the savvy landlord now, but yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to another question. So, mm-hmm. uh, partnerships. I mean, are you all on your own now? We, Do you have partnership? Because like one, so, this young cat said this to me, and I thought this was very interesting. And I actually was going to do this with somebody else. So find someone that would go buy a property for you mm-hmm. and then uh, let that person, the other person be the management. And so like I was trying mm-hmm. to buy a condo and my friend already has Airbnb set up in this condo. And it, this is a, a ski resort mm-hmm. and basically do a master lease. And I was like, you know, that'd be really, cause I can get financing. Right. And say this individual can't get financing. And I, I just thought that was a beautiful idea. And mm-hmm. he asked me that question and, I, and I, I've never done that. Would that be a good way? Or- yeah, as long as long as the expectations are, are spelled out clearly, I think that partnerships work well. Um, but you've got to literally think about every scenario. And, right. and if you died. Yeah. If, every, if you got died, broken, who's going to pay for this? Exactly. If, if, if we don't hit our numbers, who's going to lose money, me or oh, you? You know, we, I think we did know. have that in the beginning. Didn't we have like a split and it didn't work out? I was like, I'm done messing around with this dude. I remember. No, this. OK, had so, that so you had on. you had a, <laughs> a, a third floor walk up that you were trying to sell that you were trying to rent out and you wanted me to manage Airbnb. It it. Right. And I did. Everything yeah, you got mad at the me sun. <laughs> I did no, I did everything under the sun to to get that thing full filled up, but there was no elevators in the property. And you know, the the it just laundry didn't work is in out. the basement. There's four four flights of stairs, this. and it was just hard to get that thing rented. And I, you know, I I I appreciate that opportunity, but I you're like, I ain't making want, money, I'm out. You ain't making money, I'm not making money. So okay, so, I remember so, it was no hard right. feelings. I mean. Hey, if you were willing to do it, I was willing to to offer the the unit. And you know, I would have done it if it was if it, I would add it to my to my stable. Absolutely, right. But so it, now you have a whole couldn't. operation going on. You have systems in place. Mm-hmm. Is it what you thought it would be? Because it just sounds so sexy. Hey, I'm gonna go rent a unit and 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 arbitrage it and make five hundred dollars a month. I mean, that's just Al says it that way. You just said it a little bit a while ago. Does it look like that now? Or is it like a business? Like, I mean, oh, I got to turn on my long-term corporate housing hat, make sure everybody's okay. Like so, a landlord. I, I do have a, I do have a, a team, and and I do have processes. Um, we're working on uh, a few different things to improve it. It is um, whenever. Whenever we get a unit, it's like blitz. We were we're getting furniture in, we're shipping in Amazon. We got this, we got that. There's like I That's have a, a a UPS store, and they literally call me saying, "You filled up our place. You need to come get this stuff, or we're That's gonna awesome. start charging." You. So you don't have to. Work. 
you talking about the bed and all this. I'm talking chat. about the bed. I'm talking about the desk. I'm talking about the chairs. I'm talking about some of the, the, the so you the got linens. this all dialed in on a spreadsheet, right? Because oh, when yeah. I was doing mine in Florida, <clears throat> I had it all on a spreadsheet. So if they something broke, I could just click a button. I knew exactly on Amazon. I bought everything on Amazon. That's how I did it. I right. didn't want to go around to thrift stores, Al Williamson way. I didn't. I didn't. I just wanted to do it and try to duplicate it. And I'm doing something similar to that now with my tiny houses. Um, doing mm-hmm. a spec house, know exactly what it's going to cost, so right. we could scale. So exactly. that's cool. You got that in place. So what's so what are you looking for units now? Is could someone call you and say, "Hey, I got a, an, I'm a landlord. I got an apartment in a great location or a house." So so how it will work out with me? Can I help you? If, if if they want if they want me to if they are open to a rental and it fits into my, you know my matrix matrix if it fits into my lane of parameters exactly then I, yeah i'm all in can you um, be on the east side no <laughs> i know this house i sold somebody it, on. De- <laughs> it, it, de- it depends i think it you depends, own that grid. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, prospect no. you know what i'm talking about prospect and uh 39 to you, you know you can't can't it won't work there huh no no not for me honestly it's like whenever you're doing this and people don't understand like when you rock a airbnb you are so much uh uh you're you're at the will of the people that stay with customer you. so if they say hey this neighborhood is sketch or hey um this this listing is inaccurate as far mm-hmm. as a b and c all that stuff matters. Will hurt you. It, yeah. And my whole goal with when you're using that platform, mind you, I have many different marketing uh, ways that I get people coming into my places. But Airbnb, um, you know, I'm a super host, which is very hard to do uh, organically when you're having people stay for, you know, 45 plus days, only have one person. But compared to somebody that has somebody that has 20 stays in 45 days, um, they're going to have a ton of reviews when I will only have one review. So that one review has to, has be, to be money perfect every time. So okay, I so, have to create. So you know, you've been perfection. doing this for five years. I mean, have you had repeat business? Because I know you're not mm-hmm. a big fan of Airbnb. I mean, you're on it, but but you're looking for the long term, thirty days, right? Because that, that's mm-hmm. where where you, where you really cash flow, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I'm assuming. I only I only do that due to Oklahoma City um, ordinances. Um, anything less than twenty nine days is considered short short term. Right. It falls in a whole other arena, so whole you don't even arena. go down that road. Correct. Smart, savvy. I remember all these laws came out. That's another reason why I jumped out. I mean, Oklahoma City had no idea. First of all, there's no Airbnb police, but that's another story. Yeah. But the reality is, and this is this is here's a little tip for you in Branson, Missouri. Okay. Now, my buddy's a big Airbnb up there. You know what they pass there? You have to sprinkler the house. What? Yep. You can check it out yourself. My homie has a bunch of them. And it's $10,000 minimum to sprinkler house. So he's got these beautiful four bedroom, three, uh, four, four bed, three bedroom houses that he rents out for because Branson has under has more people than hotels. And the hotel people lobbied to pass an ordinance that you have to have short-term rental has to have sprinklers. Sprinkler now my system. man's super integrity, but he brought to my attention because his competitors d- don't have them. And I'm like, and that's where the Airbnb police come in. Like, you know, they're just trying to put, you know, big businesses, big corporations that own Marriott's are trying to suppress the small hustle entrepreneur to succeed and pass these crazy laws. I saw that going down in Oklahoma city. Now yes. I'm, I'm assuming it, it's not as robust anymore. It's kind of slowed down. Uh, the Airbnb laws in Oklahoma City. I mean, do, are do you still follow those? I haven't heard anything since they passed the ordinance. And 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 as far as I, I know, it all started with uh, you know a well-to-do neighborhood found out that somebody had rehabbed their home and, and was Airbnb in and out, mm-hmm. and they were considering it a business, and it needed to be this, this, and this. Yeah. And their HOA got to together. Do. Correct. And their HOA got together, brought it to the city, and now everybody has to go through this permitting process. Um, so you have to have a permit? But at the long yeah. term, you don't have to get a permit. 
Nope. Exactly. That's why I like. That's why I like your thinking, man. You're pretty savvy. I'm gonna call you the savvy. I just hey, I read the laws. Five. And I, call you and 2.5. I, <laughs> two point five because you ain't three. Two point five. All right. So we're good out. So you're looking for a unit. So ladies and gents, how do they get a hold of you? You got a house for sale. I mean, for rent and for sale, you sell it to me. Stop selling them to Jess. But if you got a if you got a rental that you need to get rented out, that's gonna make a corporate client. How do people get a hold of you? Um, you can reach out to me on my uh, email, which is velocitych24 at gmail. Um, velocitych24? Yes. But my, my website is velocitycorporatehousing.com. Um, it shows uh, some of my units. I've, I've, I think I just got three more from you. Like, in, like I got one in December and then I got two more back to back, like in January, February. Um, but those haven't been uploaded to that website yet. Um, oh, uh, uh, okay. But <laughs> so that's how people get home. Velocity, what's your website again? Velocitycorporatehousing.com. Velocitycorporatehousing.com. All right, folks, right. reach out to my man Jasper. He's going to have 30, right? 30 units times five. That's $15,000 a month. Maybe you can buy me lunch. You know, we like to go to the, what's right. that place called? Shishwan Bistro? Yes. We but mind you, the five hundred dollars is only on my one bedroom apartments. On my two bedrooms, I make more, and if well, in my house, I make more. So, so this is so we be clear. So we be clear. I, I think I rent you four units at this time. Five. Oh, you rent five from me? I have your whole bottom floor of your apartment, and then B three. Cool. All right, man, you got me. I'm a, all right. Well, good for you, homie. So you're making four G's minimum. So you definitely need to buy me lunch. Hey, we. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. I'm just excited, man. You, that you that you you're doing it. That you did it. That you set a goal. That you bought a house. You're a real estate investor, and then you took on a new battle of arbitrage, Airbnb. Incredible. Uh, I'm honored to know you, and um, and I I hope, ladies and gentlemen, that this is just to inspire you. That this this man came from. I wouldn't say nothing, but it came from a you know a, a world that it, these things can't be done. You have to go to school. You got to do these things. You can't, you know. And it's a rat race, and that this learning this skill is going to get you out of the rat race. And I think 100%. that's a that's what really matters. And that boils down to one word: freedom. And we all deserve it. That's right. How hard are you going to work for it? Right? How hard are you going to work for it? All right. Well, any anything? Uh, let's finish up with a couple more quick questions. Anything that you would like to do a bit differently? Like, uh, could you have accelerated faster? Um, what, yeah, tell us some mean, things that you would have done differently. Um, I definitely would have um, branched out more. Um, I'm actually well. Things I would have done differently is um, definitely have more units by now in hindsight, um, you know, and just not be afraid. I, I, I realized that, you know, there's, there's this, I have my own fears that are holding me back. And, um, even though I'm progressing, I'm not progressing to my potential because, you know, somewhere in the back, I'm like, this is all going to come tumbling down that every day, <laughs> you know, but we all deal with that. And, and I think that's part of the entrepreneurial, uh, spirit is that you've got to, you know, know that these are there and still navigate past them. Right. I mean, but you proved yourself, man. I, those thoughts should be left in your mind. I, I mean, I think that way all the time too. I mean, I seriously, like I, one day the, the IRS is going to call me and, you know, and I did something wrong. Like I didn't file something right. I mean, I just, I just think that's just Satan. We're walking in, you know, fear. And I just, there's a scripture that I always think it's like in Philippians, Think on, I tell this to my daughter all the time. Think on things that are real and true. Is it true? Are you in jail? No. Did you do right, something right. wrong? Not that I know of. <laughs> Am I perfect? No. Am I trying? Absolutely. You know, I always get nervous, even just confessing things on the radio. Oh man, someone can use that against me or they misunderstood what I said. Or, but I just have to walk in authority and knowing that I'm doing what I'm called to do. And you can do this over and over again. I think that's where I love Henry Ford. I don't love Henry Ford and, you know, a lot of things I learning about him, but he says this thing that I do appreciate. You can take all this away and I can get it all back. 
you know, there's another form of fashion. This is a skill set that you've learned. You've convinced me to help you, right? And in your business. I mean, you've convinced other landlords. You've convinced the bank to loan you money. You convinced the IRS that you are a good United States American taxpayer. Right. You know, can you do it again if they took it all away? Sure. It's a mindset. And that's the most important thing. So don't walk in fear no more, brother. Walk in authority. Sure. You did it. You're on the Savvy Radio Show. You're a celebrity. Now you, people will be seeing you at the parties. Hey. Oh, you Jasper. Yeah. All right. What else? You. What book would you recommend somebody? Oh, man. There's so many. Um, so one of the books that I'm reading now is Eat That Frog. Mm-hmm. Brian Tracy. Uh, which is the procrastination book, which is great. Uh, yes. And, uh, oh, man. Uh, Millionaire How about hiring a coach? Because I think that was Al Williamson oh. a, a deal breaker for you? Because you got all in, right? You paid the money. You got into the course and I saw you on there every day. And I think that's the one thing I think it's like people just buy courses, think they're going to be a millionaire. But I mean, I literally, I actually went back and looked at all of your correspondence. I can search your name and I searched your name and I saw that you were in the beginning. You were very active in that group in the beginning. I don't know where you're at now, Mm -hmm. but I mean, you're busy, right? You got a life, you got children, school just started. Man, you know, we, I got my buy in my hold, buy and holds, the um, arbitrages, and then me and my son, who lost his job prospects in, in COVID, mm-hmm. um, we started doing wholesaling together. So oh. I've been trying to coach him, and, okay. and we're, we're working on that together because, um, you know, he doesn't necessarily want to work for anybody else. So he likes those wholesale checks. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm busy all the time. That's right. Without a doubt. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you got to, I would say your network is your net worth. Mm-hmm. Um, you, we, you I've tapped with? into, some, yeah, you, you, you've got to tap around, be with people that are executors, people that get stuff done because you can't be a slouch when right. you're around these people. You got to um, be a leader. You got to have a vision. Yeah. You got to have a plan. You got to follow it. Man, I'm proud you got to get you. away from the people that that don't add to your success. Yep, drop the bad habits. All right, homeboy. Well, uh, when you get to 30 units, we'll get you back on. So next week, okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for sure, so we'll make for this sure. a, a regular thing. Appreciate you, Jasper. Thank you for your time, and uh, take care, OG. All right. Man. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets.